Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of National Focus. I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. Coming up on National Focus, government continues to deepen relations with its foreign allies. Dominica is host to a regional workshop on fungicides and fungicide resistance. And Matt Dando from Grand Four is the newest addition to the island's growing list of centenarians. The facts as they are brought to you every day, every day, every day, every day. only on GIS Channel 7. The government of Dominica continues to deepen relations with its foreign allies. An agreement signed on Monday at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will further advance ties between Dominica and Argentina. Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Alvin Bernard, and Argentina's Ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Ariel Fernandez, signed on behalf of their respective governments. Space of, of, of discussions and uh, cooperation activities, preliminary cooperation activities, in order that we come to this stage. Because both governments have expressed uh, their keen interest in advancing uh, the, the cooperation between our two countries. And in order to solidify this cooperation, it was necessary that we have an agreement that would guide this cooperation. Monday's signing comes on the heels of discussions between Dominica and Argentina on a wide range of topics including agriculture, health, sustainable environment management and small business development. A new creation of CELAC and uh, the kind of uh, South-South cooperation that uh, CELAC countries could, uh, could advance. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, that could be tremendously positive for, for, for our countries because uh, it's not uh, with a pre-cooked agenda. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Not uh, for uh, maintaining situations, mm -hmm. not for uh, developing real, real, real uh, growth of our economy, the development of uh, social issues that are tremendously important. As, uh, uh, somebody two or three days ago said that the that the money shouldn't govern decisions. Mm. We know that money is important for every class. Yeah. And for, but uh, when we talk about sustainability, mm -hmm. we are not talking about uh, short-term uh, targets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a common cre recreation of what uh, we can we can do together. So, in that sense, uh, the Argentinian government uh, is particularly pleasure that uh, we could work. Uh, Together. In other news, Director of Trade Wellsworth Bethelme has attributed the high cost of locally made products to high cost of production. Bethelme was addressing a forum in Portsmouth last week which was held to discuss the OECS Economic Union. In Trinidad, they have the source of energy where the cost of water in, uh, of, of producing the bottled water in Dominica is five times higher than how they produce it in and how much they produce it in Trinidad. So Trinidad goods, a lot of not only Dominica, a lot of people, islands are complaining about the goods from Trinidad coming in on our market at a very cheaper rate. We have the problem in St. Lucia with blue water. Blue water in St. Lucia. St. Lucia had to take Trinidad before the quoted complaining again about pricing. When they ever they would bring down their price, Trinidad would have a cheaper price. And then they could not go lower because cost of production, again, energy, they cannot compete with Trinidad in terms of energy. So that is, that, that is the answer you're looking for. So that is one of the reasons why you find most of our products is actually much more expensive than some of the imported products. Coordinator of the OECS Regional Integration Unit, Elmer Jean Isaac, says that despite some skepticism about the process towards regional integration, a lot has been achieved. 
Isaac explained that there continues to be efforts made by regional governments and the OECS Secretariat towards the implementation of various aspects of the integration process. A year ago, let's say two years ago, we did not have an OECS assembly. Today, the assembly is looking at its third meeting. Okay? Uh, two years ago, we did not have an OECS commission in place. When did it start? July of 2011 is when it started. It has had 10, ten meetings, and it is, in fact, involved in all of the areas in which it is required to be involved under the treaty. Okay? Uh, two years ago, we did not have an economic affairs commission that is responsible for an economic union. Two years ago, we were not even speaking about a reality of an economic union because we had a draft treaty. Uh, let me put that back three years. We had a draft treaty that member states had to bring to a point where they could even sign it and then ratify it and enact it into their laws. So we have made a lot of progress. Um, if I count the past five years, I would say we've made a significant amount of progress. And even before that, bearing in mind all of the other work on integration that has taken place, I would say the OECS has come a significantly long way. Representatives of the Food and Agriculture Organization to Dominica, Dr. John Ronald Dipchandra Ford, presented his letters of credentials to Acting Prime Minister Honorable Reginald Austri on Monday. Dr. Ford, who is also FAO's sub-regional coordinator for the Caribbean, also held discussions with senior officials of the Ministries of Agriculture and the Environment. The FAO official told reporters Monday that the organization has adopted a new and innovative strategy. Everything we do, we want to see results from. And everything we do must start from a question at the ground within the member state with which we are working. In other words, it must arise from a need, it must arise from a request that comes from our member states. So we have become and are trying to become more a responsive institution. Ford says the FAO is willing to work with several regional agencies to bring growth and development to regional economies. We cannot work in the Caribbean without linkages to CARDI, without linkages to ECA, without linkages to UNICEF and its own work in the Caribbean region. At the national level, we're saying to the governments that we want to work with the Ministry of Agriculture, yes, as we have in the past, Ministry of Environment also, but we must be working with the Ministry of Education on school feeding. We must be working with the Ministry of Health on nutrition. An integrated approach and a partnership approach characterizes this refocused FAO that I am describing. Tuesday, June 18, 2013 marks 32 years since the establishment of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. It represents 32 years of facilitating efforts by the nine member states to further develop the people of the OECS region through various programs and projects. In Dominica, as part of the OECS Day celebrations, preschoolers from across the island staged an exhibition on the ground floor of the government headquarters. The exhibition showcased various aspects of the life and culture of OECS states. Constant Norris was the coordinator of the OECS Day event. She spoke with GIS News on Tuesday. The whole mission of OECS is to unify, right? So if we can get from the school levels, if we can get the schools to work together, be it preschool, primary school, secondary school, tertiary education, that's important. We also want to get the people of the different islands of the Caribbean to come together to be able to work together for the good of the people of the Caribbean. In other news, a six-day regional workshop on fungicides and fungicides resistance in banana plants sponsored by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, commenced in Dominica on Monday. The workshop is being conducted in response to the black cigatoka disease currently threatening the region's banana and plantain crops and will help the region to build further capacity in the ongoing battle against the crop disease. Two technicians, each from Dominica, St. Lucia, Grenada, Guyana, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, will be trained in upgrading their capacity in fungicide application. 
The workshop will also build laboratory capacity, which will aid in the management of the Black Sigatoka. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Dr. Eisenhower Douglas, at Monday's opening ceremony, cautioned that a holistic approach must be adopted in the effective management of the Black Sigatoka disease. We need to conquer the challenges in the laboratory as well as the challenges in the field. We need the cooperation of the farming community. We need to work hand in hand in them because if the farmers are successful, the Ministry of Agriculture is, um, is successful. The Ministry of Agriculture is there to serve the farmers, to help them. Okay, that, that is what it's all about. And I want to let the farmers of this country be, be, be aware of that, that we are in the same boat and that we feel their pain. You know, we are there to work with them. Dr. Douglas is suggesting that the focus should not be solely on management of the disease, but eradication. We really want to eradicate the disease. That's what it is. We want to eradicate it. You know, it's like when you're sick and you go to the doctor. At the end of the day, you just don't want to manage it. You want to eradicate the disease so that you can enjoy full health, so that the, the, the potential of the, of the banana and the plantain subsector can reach their maximum. You know, that's what it is. You know, the actual output, the actual performance from that subsector can in fact be consistent with the potential output. That is what the, the whole exercise is all about. Senior plant pathologist from the Ministry of Agriculture in Cuba, Dr. Louis Perez Vincent, an experienced scientist, is in Dominica to facilitate the workshop. The workshop will end a year of FAO supported activities in response to requests for assistance from the affected countries. Last year, the organization provided an expert from Cuba to conduct an assessment of management efforts in each country and identify areas for improvement. Out of these assessments, each country produced a management plan and an action plan. Original plan was also compiled in conjunction with the CARICOM Secretariat and other partners. In reference to Article 13 of the revised Treaty of Bastère, which focuses on development policies, strategies have been elaborated centered on building the different sector programs of OECS member states as a regional unit. Rodinal Sumar, head of the Economic Development Policy Unit of the OECS, addressed the consultation on OECS Economic Union held last Thursday at the Public Service Training Center. The unit head explained that the strategy sets out to identify primary areas to target within the individual sectors rather than prescribe the exact actions to be taken by each individual government. Suma highlighted the strategies planned for the tourism sector. It has been decided that this sector will collaborate with immigration in order to facilitate interregional tourism as well as island hopping for international tourists by eliminating multiple border checkpoints for seamless travel. Suma also briefed about the idea of creating a unique unified identity for the OECS in tourism market. We've been discussing with OECS tourism ministers and have agreed that we will make every effort to, to go to the marketplace jointly, whether it is uh, uh, trade shows for for um, land-based, for example, world travel market, or whether we're talking about boat shows uh, on the marine side, there's a commitment for us to go jointly to the market. Um, ultimately, what we would like to see is for an OECS brand to be developed. The ministers have gone through that idea at the time that the Caribbean brand, they, everybody was buying into the wider Caribbean brand, a decision was taken that this is not the right time for us to go for an OECS brand. What we needed to do was to build a reputation in the marketplace of, of um, presenting ourselves as a unit and to build the brand based on that reputation. The unit has also developed an approach to addressing education in the field of hospitality and tourism through collaborative training. The hospitality and tourism training uh, units or institutes in all member states are going to get together as a network and to specialize in particular areas in which the countries feel that they have a comparative advantage to offer specialized training for all OECS uh, nationals that are interested in careers in tourism and hospitality. So we have a network among specialized institutions training persons in tourism and hospitality. Dominica has indicated that uh, ecotourism would be ecotourism would be its area of choice. 
in order to validate the country's capability to foster this specific area of tourism the unit has also decided to implement capacity building strategy the regional network of tourism institutions will also collaborate with international tourism organizations of europe and the u.s particularly interesting was the unit's plan of benchmarking and competitiveness assessments which SUMA indicated has already begun in the island of St. Lucia. Taking a step back from the industry and asking some from the um, existing, existing strategies and positioning and asking yourself, uh, am, I, am I really distinguishing myself as I should? Am I really doing the best that I can to enhance my comp competitiveness to use the natural assets at my disposal to position myself as strongly as I can in the marketplace? And the diagnostic has been done for St. Lucia um, and we're now getting into the, into the recommendation stage. The agreement is that this work is being done by I, the IFC. The agreement with the IFC is that this is going to be rolled out to all the member states. The unit head says that the aim of this strategy is to seize the idea of competition within the region and recognize the rivalry as being out of the Caribbean. According to him, the plan is to approach the tourism market place together and battle the competition as a group. The Grand Four Roman Catholic Church was filled to capacity on Sunday as hundreds turned out to celebrate the 100th birthday of Edwalis James, affectionately known as Madando. Madando seen sitting in this chair, beautifully dressed in this lovely dress and white pearl accessories, was surrounded by close family members, including children, grandchildren, and great-grands who wore gray and pink t-shirts bearing her photo. The new centenarian is still active and able to walk. The service was officiated by parish priest Father Michael Favalier, who was delighted to have been part of the celebration. You see how strong you are. You know, it's not because she's in a wheelchair that she's not able to walk, you know. He can march, he can parle, the baga he can chant. The baga he passes a face, he passes a voice. He has the good eyes to see all the people who are here. They know all the journey. So today, we can say thank you, bon Dieu, thank you, bon Dieu, for you men. The Catholic priest spoke highly of the life of Miss James and was impressed with the large number of family members who turned out to the celebratory mass. You've seen so many things in your life, raising up children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and maybe great great grandchildren. So, right? If we look at the pictures there in the program, we see so many of them. And we know that today you are happy. We want to share your happiness. We want to say thank you to God for the many blessings he has bestowed upon you. And thank to God for the gift of faith which you have transmitted to all these generations there. Following the church service, close family members and friends gathered for a special birthday celebration. Family members entertain the birthday lady with this fitting tribute in song. Madando is not the first centenarian to have come from the community of Grandfond. President of the Dominica Council on Aging, Zetma Toussaint, congratulated the new centenarian on reaching this milestone. I bring greetings and best wishes from the newly elected Board of Directors of the Dominica Council on Aging, the members and staff as well. We are all elated to celebrate with you and your family. 
The idea of having a centenarian in the Grand Four community is not new. For I recall visiting at least three other centenarians in the past. I know that the community is pleased to add one more to the list of centenarians from this village. And you all should be proud. Perhaps you may wish to share the secret for becoming a centenarian in this village. Parliamentary representative for Grand Four constituency, Honorable Ivan Stevenson, encouraged the younger generation to emulate the life of Madando by drinking fresh Dominican water and eating fruits and vegetables. We know the slogan for Grand Four being that of nature and culture. And when you look around, you can see the healthy community, you can see the greenery, you can see the fruits, the vegetables, you can see the tree crops that are all around us. And these are things that can give one good health. We know that Madando has been partaking in these things, partaking in the lovely fruits and vegetables, the lovely foods that will surely give one good health. The water, we know that Grandfour itself has a very good source of water. And we know that these things will surely give you good health. And good health really gives you longevity. longevity. Ms. James was assured with a number of gifts as part of her birthday celebration. Honorable Stevenson on Sunday made a presentation of a food basket to Madando on behalf of the Prime Minister. Acting Minister for Social Services and Community Development, Honorable Johnson Drago, represented Honorable Gloria Schillingford at the celebration. He too presented Madando with a gift basket and read a congratulatory message on behalf of the President of Dominica, His Excellency Eliot Williams. On behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and on behalf of Mrs. Williams and myself, I wish to extend to you my congratulations and God's or rather good wishes on the occasion of your attainment of your 100th birthday. Madando was also presented with a gift basket from Dominica's head of state. The government will present Madando with a monthly check of $500, which will go towards meeting her living expenses for life. I want you to know that the Ministry of Social Services will assist your family in caring for you. As of today, ladies and gentlemen, are you with me? As of today, Madando is qualified for $500 support to go with what all of you, the family, is already contributing. Madando will also be presented with a free cooking gas cylinder, compliments Petro Carib. And Father's Day was celebrated as a community this year in the Maho constituency with a grand lunch held on Sunday at the Masak Basketball Court. The gathering was made possible through the efforts of the Labour Youth Organization of Maho and the Parliamentary Representative of the constituency, Honorable Rayburn Blackmore. It was a well-integrated event. Both the young and their elders sat together in celebration. The lunch opened with a course of appetizing goat water. This was followed by a main course buffet styled meal with choices of rice, pasta, ground provision, vegetables, fish and chicken. To quench their thirst, the fathers were offered glasses of red wine. As head of the constituency family, it was only fitting that Honorable Blackmore cleared his schedule to be present with his people that day. The parliamentary representative reminded fathers that they have a critical role to play in the development of their children and by extension the community. The minister stressed that growth as a family community will only stem from hard work and cooperation and he pledged his continued efforts and support to building his constituency. I'm going to be with you for a while once I have my help and I'm putting myself forward again whenever the election is called, because we have so many more things to do in the constituents. We have done well, but we have much more to be done. And the journey to progress has to continue. But it's a collective endeavor there. And I am going to need your help to ensure that the Mao constituency continues to get what it did not get many, many years ago. We have to ensure that we continue to work hard 
and push the consistency forward and Dominica on a whole. Thank you very much and may the good luck come to the best. One appreciative father expressed his gratitude to the parliamentary representative for recognizing the importance of the father figures in the Mahu constituency. Put your hands together very special. Just, just to give an applause again. Wonderful, wonderful. That is great. To put your hands together because he has recognized us as very important fathers, as people that is civilized, so we want to thank him for recognizing us and we know that this man is a very proactive power rep, he's working in his community, his act is always there to do whatever is necessary, he sees everything. The event culminated in a game of dominoes among the community residents. And that's the English news. We apologize for not being able to bring Creole highlights today. Coming up next, a tip on driving safely in the rain. Scary. Everything just shaking and shaking and making big creaky noises. Earthquakes, big and small, take place in the Caribbean at least 10 times a year. The dishes rattling and falling and breaking, then Vonna started to scream. All I could think to do was shout, get outside, get out. Earthquakes, hazards, take control, reduce your loss. If an earthquake hits, what can you do? Get down, get under an item of furniture like a table, hold on and stay there until the quake passes. Find out lots more about earthquakes and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from your national disaster office and Sidera. Wet weather driving demands gentle use of all the main controls, steering, clutch, brake, and accelerator, and a larger allowance for errors and emergencies. When you begin a journey in the rain, visibility is poor. Headlights are a good way to let other drivers know where you are. It's helpful to both you and other travelers. Heavy rain can overload the wiper blades, allowing an almost continuous sheet of water to flow over the screen. When visibility is so limited that the edges of the road or the other vehicles cannot be seen at a safe distance, it is time to pull over and wait for the rain to cease. And that's all for National Focus today. We welcome your suggestions and the comments. Please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on Facebook and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. Thanks for watching.